you got 30 people at a party and they don't know what they're doing there, you know? Like you said, come to my house Thursday night. That's it, you know? No explanation. They have no idea you're nuts. <laughs> and you're actually talking to God and curing things. Because <laughs> otherwise they wouldn't be there. But if you tell them, hey, I'm going to have a buffet. Get here at 6 because all the food's going to be gone and we're going to sit down and have some fun by 7. And so at 7.15, you sit them down and you have to order them around. You know, and you say, you sit here and you sit here and you put them in little groups, you know, with a few, few people so they can help each other. <laughs> and you say, um, oh, okay, you say, uh, uh, you say to them, Ask this question and see if you get a signal. And they're, you know, they're not even listening, most of them, okay? <laughs> they don't know what you're talking about. You say, ask this question and see if you get a signal. Can I cure things? And look for a signal like a good feeling, you know, maybe a warmth in your body or a big grin spreads across your face. Or a signal like a finger movement, a physical signal like a finger movement or a pulsing in one of your hands. And ask that question and see if you get a signal. Can I cure things? And so you give that a minute and most of the people are sitting there and they have absolutely no idea what's going on. And then you say, okay, everybody who got a signal, raise your hand. And, or, or better yet, everybody who got a signal, stand up. And what will happen is maybe like three or four, half a dozen people will stand up. And you say, okay, if your signal was a good feeling, or if you got a good feeling, or if there was some change that you feel, describe it. And lo and behold, a couple of people will probably say, I felt more relaxed, or I felt a calmness, a serenity. Or, or one of them will say, wow, you know, I'm feeling pretty good here, you know. <laughs> and another one will say, you know, I felt like a bolt of lightning going down my spine. <laughs> Sometimes they get a signal like that. And so, okay. So you say, okay, sit down. And uh, you say, okay, let's try it again and see if you get a signal. Now you have their attention. <laughs> At this point, you have their attention. So you say, okay, let's see. Let's see if you get a signal now. <laughs> this is the way it always goes with groups, I'm telling you. Like, uh, you know, it seems like it's taking me a really long time to explain this, but in five minutes, watch. So you say, okay, now, ask, can I cure stuff? Or ask, can I control my immune system? Or just say, I'm now connecting to my ability to control my immune system. And see if you get a signal. And if you got a signal, stand up. And now what happens is you got this 30 people in the room. And now you've got half a dozen, no, no, that was before. <laughs> now you got like more than half of them usually are standing. And then you have them say what the difference is. And the next time you do this, the third time, you're going to have... Um, you know, like 27 people, 29 people are going to stand up. And the guy who's sit still sitting is going to be going, I don't believe this. I don't, you know, he's going to be protesting. Can I, can I ask a question? You know, I, well, I'm, I'm really skeptical about this. And everybody's like laughing. You know? <laughs> so at that point, you're ready to do the next thing, which is you just say, hey, guys, okay, now you're sitting in small groups, and I want to tell you, you can ask any question. So why don't you try asking any question, anything you want to know about, and see if you get a signal. And you sit there, and you help each other. And you got them sitting in groups of three or five, you know, and boy, do they have fun. And, you know, the guys who were, like, really angry and skeptical, by the end of the thing, they're trying. You know, sometimes they can't still get it, but they're trying. And you see, the, the tragedy of this is we have the cure for HIV. And people like Bono and Ashley Judd teach or 
speak or play music or do something and they ask for money at huge gatherings you know they'll get like 25,000 people in a stadium now imagine 30,000 people in a stadium and Ashley Judd is up there teaching this and she at the at the end you know she's where you know the third time the third time she asked the question she says ask this question can I kill HIV and you have you know 29,000 people in a stadium stand up that they got a signal that they can kill HIV because they can whether they have it or not they they can, you can kill it in somebody else <laughs> actually <laughs> they get it right back though you know you're gonna have to learn this okay you know this requires see this book okay this the complete instructions are in this book okay let me put it that way or, or and or on the website but there's further there's beyond complete instructions in the web college this is the this is the textbook okay anyway but imagine that these people now she's saying, okay, get together in little groups and help each other learn more about this and, and ask any question you want. And there are people getting up and running out of the stadium. And it's not because they don't like it. You know, it's not because they, you know, they don't want to be with the other people or something or they mistrust Ashley Judd or whatever. They're running out of the stadium because these are the AIDS activists and the, the heads of AIDS programs who are racing back to their offices to e email everyone they can possibly reach to find the cure for HIV here. And the tragedy is this has never happened because the people who are doing this are simply too dysfunctional to intuit that it's here. It's inches away from their hand on their computer. And they are too dysfunctional to, I mean, it's not their fault, you know. They're wonderful people. They're heroic. They're, they're just dysfunctional. <laughs> so when you're dysfunctional, you're not intuitive enough to find the cure. And this, the cure for HIV has been sitting on the web for 13 years and they, you know, they haven't been able to access it. It's, it's tragic, horribly, horribly tragic. Well, all right, 12, 11 years. It's, it's shameful. It's a shameful statement about humanity that you and I are sitting here with the cure, you know, and what can we do about it? We can become functional, you know. We, you and I can join hands and and remove the causes of our dysfunction and become functioning human beings. And then together we may manifest because serendipity is a function, manifesting is a function. And we can manifest this. And this is what the Cure Show is about. You know, this Cure needs to be, you know, more than a web page on, in, on the web like this. It needs to be all over television. You remember the World Trade Center attack? And you, you know, you, all you saw when you turned on the television on any channel was the World Trade Center. This is what cure has to be. And this is why we started having the cure show. You know, we, we saw that we needed to create a prototype for it. I mean, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to make it available. I mean, we may be a little late. You know, maybe the world may go over the edge, but, uh, you know, we're just doing what we can. And all you and I can do is, you know, be as functional as possible and as connected to each other as possible and uh, see what comes of it. <laughs> just find out, you know, if we can cause uh, the end of disease on the planet including the disease that causes people to destroy the planet. <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs>